in the trenches with Ryan Roxy. Speaking of Christmas songs, I mean, Hanoi Rocks had that song, Dead by Christmas, which is kind of, we wrote that in, uh, was it 82? I think, yeah, in Stockholm. And we were, you know, me and Andy were, you know, kind of hitting it hard. Up. Yeah, hitting it hard, you know. And uh, uh, the song is actually inspired by the Sparks. So my favorites, you know, you know the Sparks? Of course, the Sparks, um, yeah. a duo. They, they were a duo. The both of us. Yes. Yeah. Very... Uh, in the, the propaganda, Kimono My House and Propaganda albums and, uh, and the Indiscreet. Those are the best ones in the 70s. So they had a song called Here in Heaven, which was about the guy being dead already on the edge of a, cl edge of a cloud. And it's like uh, the lyrics are uh, here. There are lots of things to do and a panoramic view of the universe completely surrounding and here, uh, hang on, you cannot buy souvenirs. Uh, here are many, many sheep and people only sleep and awake to tell how gory and gruesome was their end. And I don't have many friends. Juliet, you broke a little pack. Juliet, I'm never coming back. Up here in heaven without you. Up here in heaven without you. It is hell knowing that your health will keep you out of here for many, many years. And it's, <laughs> so the idea was like the guy. Wait, is wait, wait. The hold on, hold on, Michael. That's Michael Monroe, folks. Just for the people that are just tuning in right, right now, that's Michael Monroe reciting the sparks from pure memory. There's no notes there. I know that it's just that it's it's all that memory, that that backdoor snaps memory going on. I this is what I love about having Michael Monroe on the podcast. It, that every time I think I have a script or I think I have a direction, I might as well just throw my script out the door because Michael is so much more entertaining when you just let him go. And, and you let me hear these stories because honestly, folks, you are covering so many of the questions that people have asked. And, and I have a whole segment that I was going to start this podcast with Let the People Speak. We even have an intro for this. We have a whole section for Let the People Speak. But the point is. You're speaking, Michael, and you're speaking for the people. So I'm going to get into questions from people, but at the same time, anytime you want to tell these gems, these, you know, diamonds in the rough stories, please go off and tell these stories because honestly, folks, having you on the podcast is always a treat and I really appreciate it. you got the no, fastest train on the planet. Well, as I was saying, the concept for the song Dead by Christmas was from the Spark, the Spark song Up Here in Heaven up here and have a with her too you know juliet we, uh, we brought you broke our little packs juliet i'm never coming back up here in heaven without you they're a hilarious band the lyrics are geniusly crazy but so we came up with the song dead by christmas uh, you know uh, uh, i'll be dead by christmas now anyway uh, tell me will you remember me that day when you found a new one that was better than i ever was I'll be dead by Christmas now. Anyway, be, please give all my things away. They'll make great Christmas presents for you and all my friends. Yeah, it hurts so inside to see you with another uh, or from the edge of a cloud. Whatever happened to the promises that we made when the, before the angels took me away. So here I am all dressed in white while you're drinking up my best red wine. And you don't realize that I'm with you all the time. So I, I was the whole, it was an eerie, eerie idea, of course, the song. But... Uh, and then the last chorus goes, I'll be in dead by, I'll be dead since Christmas now anyway, so leave flowers, leave the flowers on my grave. The sure way you can join me any day around, honey. And you will be dead by Christmas now anyway. You lay beside me in our family grave and, and we'll be making love eternally in a, uh, in a spiritual way. We'll be dead by Christmas now anyway. We'll sell everything away. We've got a life to live, a life after death. Anyway, so that was the, the Hanoi Christmas song. And we, we, we were planning to make a single out of it and have a cover of a burning Christmas tree and a red cocaine mirror with the cocaine lines writing, written dead by Christmas with, with lines of coke. But that then one fitting. of our roles- would be very but, fitting. Yeah, it's until uh, we were rehearsing the song and uh, we had two roadies at the time and the, the Finnish guys and we were in Stockholm and the other roadie came in and said that the, the other roadie had been staying up for, for three nights and uh, he hung himself. So then no. it wasn't that much fun anymore. So he, Not you know, much fun. No, no, no. Yeah, the, so the, we the, came the up whole... with the idea. Of, wow. Uh, but but the year- song was, this but Michael, the actually, you... go ahead. That song was can. Uh, it was uh, banned on the college radio in the states because I guess because of the suicide. Uh, some, you know, I guess they thought that it would uh, inspire some kids to do something stupid like suicide or something. I don't know. But it was banned on the college radio. 
However, typical of Hanoi, getting to yeah, trouble. Yeah, but this is what I want to talk about, Michael. This is exactly the era. You know what's great is that I was going to start the show off with let the people speak and then go to the thing called the main event, which is what we okay. were going to talk about. But you mentioned the year 1982. You mentioned the song Dead by Christmas. And if I'm not mistaken, that year, 1982, that was right around the era of the album Oriental Beat. Yes. And that is a very important segment in today's podcast, folks. Again, if you're not uh, listening to us or watching us on the YouTube official channel, please go to Ryan Roxy official, hit that subscribe button. But we can go back to that album cover one more time because the year is 1982. It is, uh, the album is Oriental Beat. You guys, the this breaks you, this album breaks you into an international market. And apparently... Uh, the working title for that album, Second Attempt for Suicide. Am I right? Uh, that have anything to do with Dead by you're Christmas? You're kind of cutting off now. I can't hear. Can oh. you come again? Okay. Apparently, that album, uh, Oriental Beat, the working title of it was called Second Attempt for, tu for Suicide. Am I right? Well, I still couldn't hear you, but... I oh, can tell shit. you the story. <laughs> Please do. Tell hey, me the story. You're cutting off for some reason. I don't know. But, uh, hey, Kyler. Is Kyler saying hello? Hello, Kyler. <laughs> Kyler is saying hello for you yeah. and for the coop. Anyways, you, uh, Ryan, you're, uh, you, all I can hear is, you know, it's cutting off now for some reason. But I can can you, you hear me, more. Vic? Can you hear if me you okay? can give me a thumbs up. Okay, Vic, yes. Vic can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you fine. Okay. So the story about Oriental Beat, the album was, recorded in, in the end of 81 and uh 82 it was released in 1982 and it was mixed like like shit it was like the producer i don't know what he was thinking but it was really poorly mixed and uh we we had some uh rough mixes on on a cassette and uh then uh we thought it was going to be fine but then it came out and we were we heard it for the first time it was already pressed onto vinyl some hotel room somewhere our, our manager brought a record player a turntable and played it so I was like well I guess we couldn't change it anymore it was but it sounded horrible and it, it really had some great songs and when Guns N' Roses wanted to release our our uh, European catalog on their Uzi Suicide label in 19 in 1990 or 1991 we we thought we wanted to remix the album but it, it turned out that the the Finnish the 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 owner of the Finnish label Johanna Records that released our stuff in Finland had taken their multi-track tapes and sent them to Germany to be mixed by some producer and the producer had disappeared and the, and the tapes had disappeared. So we thought that they were lost. Lost for, you thought they were lost forever, right? Yes. Yes. We thought, we thought that they were lost and, uh, they were, uh, I, I started tracking them down now because of the Corona situation and everything. I'm looking back at what I could, you know, what could be done. Some old records could be remixed and stuff. So I, I started tracking them down and I found out that, uh, the Johanna record stuff that was owned by Universal in Finland. So I got in touch with the head of Universal. I said, can you check in your warehouse where you have the Hanoi material that if there's a, if there are multi-track tapes of Hanoi Rocks Oriental Beat, and if it says, uh, if it says at Vision Studios London on the tapes, then they're the correct tapes. And they were them. They were the tapes. So I was like, wow, we can, we can remix the album. So we started to started the process of mixing. We're doing it as we speak. So it'll be released next year, uh, finally with a proper sound. And it already sounds like night and day. I mean, it's such a huge difference. So uh, I'm really excited about that. So that's the big news that's coming out of today's In the Trenches is that the second Hanoi Rocks record, Oriental Beat, is being the missing tapes that were thought to have gone missing forever have been found, and the album is being remixed as we speak. Look for a 2021 release. There's a couple things about that album, Michael, that I wanted to ask you about. A couple cool little quirks that maybe um, even Hanoi Rocks uh hardcore fans might not know uh yeah. that album featured a different drummer am i correct gyps gyp casino? Gyp casino yeah the gyp casino was the original drummer who was a swedish guy who plays on the first album uh bangkok shock saigon shakes and rocks and on oriental beat and he actually plays on self-destruction blues as well even though razzle is on the cover of self-destruction blues gyp plays on that record too so he was the drummer uh, and I got to straighten something out. 
I noticed I, I was looking for information because I was surprised to see that Oriental B never had any information about the band. It doesn't even have the players listed. It's, it just has, it just says Hanoi Rocks Oriental Beat. And in the back cover, it says the names of the songs. And That's yeah, the back cover right there. The back that... cover only has the names of the songs and the tacky picture of Andy's girlfriend's tits. And, and <laughs> look, at, look at on the upper left corner, you can see the blue paint hasn't quite covered her an armpit. Oh it's my so, God. So it's really tacky and horrible. Now, was that, that supposed to be the, was that, that supposed to be the band, uh, first right? album? Was that supposed to be the, the original album cover? No, that was no. actually we had an idea we were going to have a greatest hits come uh, um, a greatest hits album called the greatest hits and that was the that was going to be that <laughs> but uh, that would never happen and uh, Andy's idea was to paint his girlfriend you know like that and but it was so tacky because you can see that <laughs> the little paint is missing from that they it's missed the so, spot right here yeah right here. Right and the right front here. cover is like this is this kind of shroud kind of like a you know like a net. Uh, uh, through which my head is my head is through the through the thing. It's like a stocking or kind of material. And our manager's hands, our manager Zeppo, put his hand, hands in the paint and has all these hands uh, hand marks on it. And it's the, let's go back to that original cover. It's so bad, it's good. <laughs> yeah, let's. let's it's I mean, horrible. no, it's it's a, it's a classic album cover, and obviously you were pressed against the glass because I believe. Is that is that Annie McCoy whose lips he either looks like he has a massive collagen injections or he's putting his face against the glass? <laughs> yeah, no, he's putting his face against the shroud. It's like a you know, it's 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 like you know what what stockings are made of. You know, it's like a little I don't know where where they got that. It's like a net. Okay. You know, and my head is through the net, and everyone else is behind it. Like Sammy looks like a like a you know like a burglar with his nose like that. <laughs> <laughs> so and Andy's lips are, look you know against the net. That's why everyone looks so funny. And Jeff Casino's nose is like that you know because he's against the net. But my head and my arm are through the net. And my manager put his handprints on the on the net. So his artistic vision. <laughs> Now, is it true or not that that Jip Casino missed a beat during motivating, and you know that had might have had something to do with his eventual not being in the band, or no, is there nothing. No, nothing. that's folklore. Yeah, this, is the first time, this is the first time I hear that, but I gotta say I gotta straighten something out. Okay. I went I went looking for you know uh, information about the album in the internet, and it says. It says completely untrue. Uh, it says that Jip Casino had a heroin habit, and he was fired from the band because of that. And it's completely untrue. Jip Casino sure. never had a heroin habit. I don't think he ever even tried heroin. It was the only guy in the band that never <laughs> went through heroin. So it says in the internet, I must, this must be corrected. That's yeah. fiction, Jip right Casino, there. Fact or fiction? He, yeah, this is complete fiction. I don't know who came up with it. And it, it even said that Jip was fired from the band because of his heroin habit. It's complete bullshit. He was never, he never even tried. I'm, I don't know if you ever even tried it. He never did heroin. He's the only one in a band who did not do heroin. <laughs> and, so it's crazy how the internet comes up with this stuff. Uh, well, I even saw this video, which is the tragic history of Hanoi Rocks. And it says, yeah, Mr. Casino was uh, fired from the band because of his heroin habit. It's like, what? No, crazy. No. It's not true. It never did Folks, heroin, just for the record. you know. There's a lot of Hanoi Rocks fans out there who's ever... Uh, keen to wikipedia i think you got to change it you got to go on wikipedia and change it under the uh oriental beat and make sure you add the bombshell that we've just said the missing tapes have been found they're being remixed right now one other thing about that album i want to bring up and you can tell me whether it's fact or fiction uh katrina from the band Katrina and the Waves is rumored to have sang background vocals on the song Don't Follow Me. Is that true, fact, that or fiction? That is absolutely correct. That is true. Fact! It's a fact! It is a fact. <laughs> <laughs> Katrina, she sings wonderfully, too. She sings out. I've been, I've been mixing that song, too, now. It's like you can really hear her. She's singing great. She was a great, great girl. We had a great time. We were... We did the vocals. She was, she did her parts and she sang beautiful harmonies. That was before she had the big hit, uh, "Walking on Sunshine," right? Exactly, yeah. "Walking on Sunshine." That was a huge hit for her. She probably yeah. still she probably still enjoys Christmas every single year because of it, right? 
yeah uh, god bless you christina wherever you are all our love and uh yes she still sounds amazing on that record and uh it was great to have her that was before she was well known and uh, she was a nice i remember we sat around we did the did the work and then we sat around had some beers and some splits and we had a good chat and uh did she do the nice splits too or did you teach her the splits no i meant the spliff Smoking. Oh, the splits. I thought it was the splits because I know that you're one of the only front men that can do the splits. You and Eric Dover and James Brown, of course. Now, did you get the splits from, from James Brown? No, I just I just noticed one time that there was a time when, uh, I don't know when it was, yeah, well, in 1984 or something, when I started exercising and, you know, doing this martial arts kind of warm-up and stuff. And then I realized I could do the splits. And I thought, well, that'd be a nice addition to my show. So... I wasn't really, I didn't really combine, I didn't really uh, come up with the splits. I didn't copy that from anybody, surprisingly. I thought <laughs> if I could do, but didn't David Lee, I think David Lee Roth did some splits though. Didn't he do the splits too? Well, I, back in those days, it was you, David Lee Roth was very flexible, as well as the artist formerly known as Prince. And oh, yeah. always Prince known as did. Prince. Yeah. Prince, Prince did the splits, yeah, but he got he's, he got his moves, a lot of these moves from uh, from uh, James Brown, obviously. James Brown as well, yeah, whole no bit. doubt. So he was like a mixture of James Brown, Little Richard, and, and Jimi Hendrix in a great way. Well, folks, yeah. there you have it. That's one of our, again, one of our many exclusive uh, sound bites is that Oriental Beat uh, is coming out soon with the new remixes. And Katrina from Katrina and the Waves has sang backgrounds and her newly mixed voice will come on as well. So, yeah, so we sat around, we talked, and we had a couple of beers and some spliff with her. That was it. <laughs> Yeah, man. Yeah, and man. Just, we didn't do it. I didn't do the splits yet, yet at that time. <laughs> I'm Ryan Roxy, and I've taken all my years of experience of playing guitar, and I want to pass the torch of rock and roll on to you. Check out the System 12 Guitar Method. Hello folks, Roxy here. Thanks for watching the video. And if you liked it, hit the subscribe button or one of the videos around me to watch more. If you like to, please leave a comment. If you didn't like the video, maybe you'll forget how to type. <laughs>